Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Not RV. On this week's episode, we're installing our solar panel racks and the panels up on the roof. If you want to learn more and make less mistakes while RVing, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Check us out online at whynotrvusa.com. We also have a great Facebook group that's growing pretty quickly. Uh, just type in Why Not RV under Facebook groups, or you can click the link in the description below. We're also now on Patreon at patreon.com backslash whynotrv. To get started, let me just say that I built this system uh, the, in my head to be extremely expandable in the future, meaning I can change the layout of the panels, I can change the wiring of the panels, I can even change the mounting of the panels without having to do anything extra up on the roof, um, it drilling into the, in, in, into the roof. So let's get to the plan on that. Okay, so here's the basic plan. I have this Unistrut run Ooh. down the uh, RV. And the reason I want to do Unistrut is because I can now mount this Unistrut to the RV roof play with my panels right now I'm going to just do my panels flat on them but if down the road I want to change that I want to try and do something angled or something like that I don't need to be drilling any extra holes in the roof the unistrut is going to create basically a platform for me to be able to do stuff down the road and also when I go to sell the RV if I can't sell it for the price I want with this solar on top of it then I can just take my solar panels off leave the unistrut up on here and not worry about creating any extra holes or anything like that so the Unistrut runs all the way down. So I got eight panels that'll go on this side, four panels that'll go over here. And uh, we're gonna get to drilling these things in. I'm gonna show you guys that process. I apologize for the wind. I went ahead and mounted my solar panels to my Unistrut uh, on both sides so that my Unistrut is nice and spaced out for how I want the panels laid out for now. This is called a cone nut. It's basically just this little plastic cone that holds this nut that goes into the unistrut. So the unistrut, let's just say, is, is laying down right here. And this basically goes in between and it twists in and then, it, and then it's locked. Once you tighten in the bolt, it tightens it up against the unistrut because these little feet right here uh, are held up against the inside of the unistrut channel and it holds it in nice and tight. So this is what I used for the actual brackets from the panels uh, to the unistrut. A well nut is uh, this little rubber nut that has a big, uh, you know, thick top. I will call it a, a washer basically on the top side. And then it's a skinny little tube that goes down into whatever you drilled into. So, and at the very bottom of that tube is a little actual nut for the, for the bolt. So when you put it through your roof or whatever it is that you're mounting to, and that screw goes through to the bottom and it starts to tighten it up, it pulls the rubber together and that top thick washer part of the uh, well nut stays on top of the roof and the bottom of it squeezes up and all the rubber that's in between you know on the on the shaft of the well nut gets pulled in and squeezed kind of like a rivet and it creates a extremely watertight seal because it's rubber on both the top and bottom side so that and I added you know the lap sealant on there you'll see um, that is how I created a watertight seal for all of my uh, well nut mounts on the Unistrut. So the first thing I do is I take my well nut, my washer set, and the, and the bolt, and I get them all together. So when I push it through, I don't push it all the way through to the roof, or through, through the roof into the other side. So now that's ready, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pick my spot. I'm gonna go with the second hole from the back, drill my hole. Take my well nut bolt set, get a little bit of a lap sealant on it. Kind of like that. Push it into the hole. Now I can back my screw out and get it set all the way through the unistrut, like that. Now that one's ready. Let's get the other one. through the unistrut. And now what I like to do is take my lap sealant and I like to make a seal all the way around it and even right on top of it. So when the bolt goes on, it's gonna pull it right down into it. This stuff is meant to be nasty and goopy. It's not meant to be clean. So 
You just kind of got to deal with it. Now my bolts are just in and pressed. I can take my screwdriver. I press down on it nice and tight. And I slowly tighten it. I do not over tighten these. And these are basically just hand tight, as you see. I just use the screw gun to make it go a little bit faster. But if you over tighten these, you'll probably break through your wood because this wood is not very thick. So now I take some more lap sealant, put it right on top. And now I'll show you what it looks like. I put a well nut in on every single piece of unit strut at the back and up at the front. Let me see if you can see it up there in between each, each one. Now in between, I just put a regular wood screw with lap sealant on it and sucked it through just to make, you know, just for some extra security. But every single piece of unit strut, see here's a new, a new piece that begins right there. So I got a well nut there. I got a screw. I got another screw. And all up here in the front is another well nut. It's the exact same thing on the other side. Here's the other benefit. By adding the Unistra, I've now essentially added all this space for airflow. If I just mounted these straight to the roof, you see where the panels mount to the Unistra. That's all the air gap that would be underneath of them. So now I've added an extra couple of inches of air gap so the panels will cool down much better and stay cool longer so they'll perform better. So I want to go ahead and show you guys how to make these MC4 connectors. These are the standard solar type connectors. You got a male and a female. Coming off the panel, this is your male, or excuse me, this is your positive, the male is a positive, and the female is the negative. So the way I made my, ca my cables that run to the panels is, of course, opposite, because the male positive that's on the panel is gonna connect to a female plug, which this is the positive cable that runs into my junction box. So here's my positive wire for this run. So let's go ahead and strip this back a little bit. We're gonna get our connector on it. What I like to do is just give it a little bit of a pinch just so it stays where it's supposed to stay at. Then I take the special crimping tool that comes with these things. Okay. And I set it up in there. Make sure it's nice and good. Get a nice solid crimp all the way till it fully closes and release. And now that is on there. I take my connector I just push it right in until it clicks. Bam, now that's it, that's on there. We can go ahead and tighten this down. It creates a nice watertight seal. That's it for that one. Let's do our negative real quick. Now, another way you can do this is some people just take this and they preload it inside the crimping tool. So they'll kind of get it in there. This is why I like to pinch it shut a little bit. I like to give it a little bit of a pinch. And they'll get it in there and just kind of hold it in place and get it over the wire. And then give it a, a full crimp. Personally, I like it the other way, but of course, it's all about what works for you. So that's that. Slide this on our connector on there. Click, tighten it down. And now I can take my connectors from the actual panel, connect my uh, male into the female. Female into the male, bam, that's that. Those go up underneath there and that's it. This is my positive coming off the connection we just made. Negative. And 
that's it. So inside here you see my positive bus bar comes in. I have all of the positive leads just kind of bent in and right into it from this side and go over and in from this side. And the negative and the bus bar, same thing. I have the negatives come up, up over the top, down and in. And this side they just come straight down and in. So nice and simple, clean install. I know every single wire. I know this is my first panel, second panel, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. And on this side is first, second, third, and fourth. So it's nice and good, nice and simple, clean. This is it. One, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight panels over here. And another one, two, three, four panels over here. It's 1,200 watts of solar up on the roof. Nice and clean, nice and straight. Super, uh, you know, once I knew what I wanted to do, it was super easy. Uh, the, the mounting of the Unistrut, of course, is nerve wracking whenever you're drilling into the, you know, you're drilling holes into the roof. But uh, let me kind of show you guys, let me get you a little closer look at everything. So you can see what I did here is the side that has eight panels, I ran all of my cables right here so they just come straight into the junction box. Everything else is underneath the panel so that they're not in the sun at all. They're not being exposed uh, to the elements like that. And uh, I went ahead and got this nice and secured and clean so that it is in there and it's not going anywhere. It's not gonna rub on anything. Now I am gonna check up on it here, you know, as, as time goes on and as we have rain and that kind of stuff. And as we go down the road and uh, give you guys some updates on how this install is. Do not do what I just did. I will never tell anyone to do this install, okay? This is a very, very advanced type of thing. Hire a professional. Um, if you want to do things yourself, have fun. Use this as an example of what I did, but do not do it yourself. Um, that's all I'm going to say. So anyways, so uh, my panels are mounted right into the Unistrut using the little cone nut, nylon, uh, nylon cone nuts. So once the Unistrut, uh, once I laid everything out, I put all the panels down, I was able to you know, basically keep the Unistrut as spaced out as I wanted it because I had the panels already on it and already mounted to it. So it was real easy to just start drilling my drilling my uh, well nuts and getting this Unistrut nice and secured and tight to the roof. I connected all of my panels in parallel, meaning every single panel is it has its own positive and its own negative. They're all only producing the standard, you know, 18 to 20 volts that they produce uh, at like five amps. 100 watts each and every single one of them. So the reason I did parallel is because right now I have two wires running to every single panel on both sides, two wires, positive and negative. If down the road I wanna switch over to series, all I gotta do is disconnect the two, a uh, positive on this one and a negative to that one, leave the old wires there, connect these in series, connect these in series, these in series, these in series, and then my, my, my wires are still already there. If I ever want to go back to parallel again, I can mess with things as I want. And that's another thing that's great about the Unistrut. Right now, I just did a flat, a flat roof mount. The reason I wanted to do a flat roof mount was because I just wanted to see what my 1200 watts with a flat install and all in parallel would do. Is it enough for what I'm wanting? Do I need more? How do I get more? Do, do I get more by putting them in series parallel or do I get more by adding a, a tilting rack? Because I have the Unistrut, that'll be super easy to do. I don't need to do any extra drilling or screwing or anything crazy. I just got to figure out, you know, some angle brackets and, you know, whatever way I want to be able to tilt these, whether it's, you know, mounting them all together and then using, uh, you know, a pneumatic tube to do it uh, or an electronic thing to do it um, or just come up here and manually lift them and set them in like a cotter pin or something like that. There's all sorts of ways to do that kind of thing. But it gives me the freedom to do that. And again, all my cables are nice and neat underneath the panels. If you look at other videos online, you'll see all these different YouTubers that have done different solar installs and you got wires running all over the freaking roof. They're running up this way, over this way, down that way. And you got a turn on tape on over everything. I mean, look at this. I got one little bundle of wires coming out there and one little bundle of wires coming out there. I mean, that's it. Super, super clean. Uh, I'm extremely, extremely happy with this. I will give you guys some updates down the road as we're using it and as it's performing. That's it for this week's video. Be sure to drop a like, hit that subscribe button, share the channel, I appreciate it. Next week, we're gonna talk about all of the settings I have on my Victron products and how I'm charging all my batteries up properly and safely and how I'm using this new little box to go ahead and monitor everything.